Right, here we go. Rally car number three, Grabbers. This was the best-selling hatchback in the UK between 1975 and 1978, but the Chevette's real story began at the end of that successful run because it became a HS road car and it became a rally car. And you've got to have a rally jacket if you're driving a Chevette. Is that that's what this law. is? Yeah, that's what this is. It's the law. I've got the rally jacket. I've got the matching trainers. And the matching suntan. The matching suntan. Yeah. You've got the jacket. What more do we need? So this car won big things in British rallying. It won the British Open Rally Championship. It took on the Fords. It took on the Triumphs. It took on everything. Mm. And Vauxhall were very clever with their homologation of this car to make it a Group 4. But we'll come to that because in this series, I'm trying to convince Sarah Crabtree that these iconic British classic cars here at the Great British Car Journey were actually rally legends. You thought I was promising you rally cars. I did. I turned up this morning thinking that we were actually going to have busy people driving rally cars, the way you're talking. But I get it. You don't have to do too much more convincing. I completely get it. I even dug out my old helmet for a bet. <laughs> I don't know how to follow on from that far. Let's just drive the car. <laughs> Remarkable. Wow, how easy was that? S smooth. Right. You got a bit of WD 40 in your pocket. It's one of those annoying things. <laughs> yeah. Let's be sensible now. So the first thing you need to know about the Rally Vauxhall Chevette is that it went from a 53 horsepower road car to a 250 <laughs> brake horsepower yeah. Rally Monster. So this didn't start as a car that was destined to go rallying. It started as a car that was meant to take on the yeah. consumer car market. Yeah. It went to Brazil before we got it. There's a theme here, isn't it? All these it British a, cars that it went It was a abroad. family saloon, wasn't yeah. it? You know. And it was a best-selling one for three years before um, Bill and Blydenstein got involved and... Uh, you can see why though. Yeah. Just classic, elegant lines. And I don't think people would expect a Chevette to be described as that, but that's what I see when I look at a Chevette. Classic, elegant lines. Yeah, for me that's what it is. Is it? Yeah. We all have our own perspective, yeah. don't we? You see, I look at my towel and I see a beautiful shape. Whereas most people look at a town and go, what, what, why? On the plus side, most people can draw in a towel. They can. Every two year old child can draw in a towel. And for me, this is one of those cars that is just, it's beautiful. Yeah, the it was designed to do normal things very well, this car, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. And it did. Between 1975 and 78, like I say, it was the best selling hatchback in the UK. But here's where it all changed because Bill Blydenstein in the early 70s was um, more focused on racing cars, shall we say. But in yeah. 76, they said to him, No, Bill, we need you to focus on the rally cars as yeah. well. You've kind of you've forgotten those. Um, and so he, he was in charge of the whole competition project, and that's when the rally thing came alive. So 19. 78 they brought out the hs yeah. chevette they made 400 homologation specials yeah. and did they actually manage to do the whole 400 did they produce well four? they did they did but then when the hsr came out in 1980 they took 40 of the hs's that hadn't sold and just modified oh, them a bit more them. yeah lightweight panels big wider arches and um the HSRs, the so they were all, yeah, so they were all... The HS was the first they, one, yeah. they had the lower big bib on the yeah. front, big air down. The HSR, they were all silver with the red graphic. They both were, the, the HS were as yeah. well, but the HSR, you can tell it because it's got the big wide arches yeah. as well, like the rally cars. Yeah. And that's when they had to go to the full Group 4 spec, because in 79, Pentia Ricola um, won the Open Rally Championship, British Open Rally Championship, yeah. in a Chevette but it was the HS spec Rally Chevette. Yeah. And by 1981, 
where they Tony to Pond again. again, Tony Pond, there's that man yeah, again. They need he, need, yeah, again. They, he needed yeah. to, to really yeah. get some more power under the bonnet and uh, he needed it to be lighter, he needed it to be more um, versatile against the Escorts. And that's and, where the HSR came in yeah. at that point. And also and against well the Mantas, because the Mantas were coming in for Vauxhall. Of course, so yeah. Opel and Vauxhall were kind of infighting as yeah. well. Because they, so, they wanted and how that. Well did, how well did the HSR do? Well, Jimmy McRae was in the Manta 400, which was the, going to be the replacement for the Chevette anyway. So Tony Pond had a bit of an uphill struggle, not only in terms of competing against the Manta, but also to try and get the, the budget for the programme. They had to prove that the Chevette was still worth investing in. So yeah. they did that with the HSR. And it did win the Constructors Championship in the 81 British Open Rally Championship. Okay. But ultimately, the Manta Not, won. So, so, Vauxhall and Opel were fighting against themselves at that point because the Manta was the Group B car. Not being a rally guru, what does the Constructors mean? Sorry. That's the manufacturers. The so, manufacturer. you had the Drivers' Championship. Drivers' Championship, right. And yeah. the Constructors' Championship. Yeah, so the Drivers' right, Championship okay. was won by Jimmy McRae in the yeah. Manta 400. Um, but the Constructors was won by Tony Pond in the Chevette. Wow. So Vauxhall won the Constructors' yeah, Championship, yeah. Opel won the Drivers' Championship, and then the Mantle would take over the Mantle. And it was a bit of a changing of the guard. But this car was just formidable, particularly on tarmac. A bit like the TR7, it was a bit of a tarmac yeah. warrior, the Chevette. But, you know, the, the same names crop up in the British rally story. And again, it was Tony Pond. Of course. Well, they're going to have that era, isn't it? You know. British rally cars, British rally drivers, but it was Penty Auricula that really put this car on the map in 79. So, really successful rally car. Again, another car that I can't look at without thinking rally car. Yeah. The Chevette, so named because it was penned as a baby Chevrolet, was the best selling hatchback in the UK between 1975 and 1978. Vauxhall's ad agency wanted you to know that the Chevette could be whatever you want it to be. And to be honest, that was true. Not many family cars in the mid 70s offered two and four door saloons, hatchback and estate versions. But it's the rally version Paul gets all excited about there. Too right, Sarah. The Chevette may have been a versatile road car, but it was pretty versatile as a rally car as well, in that it could go fast at just about any angle. The Chevette went from 1.3 litre to 2.3 litre in order to prepare it for the special stages. The power increased by five times in readiness for Pentia Ricola to win the 1979 British Open Rally Championship and Tony Pond to repeat the feat in the Constructors' Championship in 81. The homologation special road cars, the HS and wide arched HSR, are two of the most exotic sports cars to come out of the 70s. Did you just use the words Vauxhall and exotic in the same sentence? Going back to the classic car aspect, which is what it's all about, really. Yep. Um, look at the HS and the HSR now. What a collect! What you know, they are collectors. They're well, a proper yeah. collectors car now. Well, if you can find a HSR, it's yeah. supercar money. The HSS, they made for forty of them. Yeah. I saw three actually lined up at um, Silverstone last year and they just, God, they look good. They're, they they look are incredible cars and, and Bill Blydenstein knew what he was doing. He'd yeah. been racing these things to good effect um, and you, you had people like Jerry Marshall involved by this point. And so you had some really big names helping to develop these cars as well. That was important. At that point, rallying was becoming an arms race. We were heading fast at this point towards the Group B era. Um, and everyone was having to fight for their own little corner of the, the budget. Yeah. And the Chevette managed to hang on, as I say, right until 81, which is a real fairy tale, I think. I think Vauxhall versus Opal, and uh, the, the battles that must have been happening in, in the boardrooms to kind of decide who was going to have the next oh, yeah, rally car and what it would be. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, but Vauxhall didn't really think far enough ahead with the Manta. They, they stuck with their familiar rear wheel drive platform and mm. ultimately Groovy wouldn't go too well from them. This was the last time that during that era Vauxhall would have it all their own way in rally. Yeah. yeah. Now as much as you would love this to be an HS. Yes. I'm very excited just to be driving this and 
given the choice, I'd probably opt for this. Would you? Over the HS. Yeah. Look at it. It's cool. It's very cool. It's very simple, <laughs> functional, it's chunky. Just lovely. What always makes me laugh with cars of this era is you can tell when you're not driving a top spec car because they remind you. Wait yeah. until we climb in the metro, there's a big blanking patch on the, on the uh, dashboard and it says oh. metro, as if they meant to do that. But actually, <laughs> in a higher spec car, you've probably got a speaker controls. So yes. here, yes. you've got space for two big dials. And that should have been a rev counter, but it's not. It's a temperature gauge Yeah. and it's your fuel tank. And then in the middle, this is the best bit, blanking patch here. And it just shows you where the gears where the are. Where the gears are, just in case you forgot. So you can look and at I, that while you're changing gears. And this doesn't even tell you which gear you're in. I thought that'd be clever. But no, it doesn't do that. No, it doesn't. It's just basically just to remind you. Uh, information. That's all it is, is information. Yeah. So I, I do like Chevette's. I've got a yeah. real thing for them. One of our yeah. neighbours had one when I was a kid, and you see loads of Chevettes in the 80s. Just they were old cars then, but yeah. people used to knock about. Great cars. Um, but yeah, it would have to be a HS for me. I'll take this one then. Okay, you have you this have one, HS. and I'll go and I'll, I'll keep hunting one. for a HS. There isn't one here at the Great British Car Journey. There isn't, no. But the story started with this one. Yeah. You're going to want to drive it. Yeah. And it. this is obviously one that's out of the Drive Dad's Car fleet. Yeah. So you can drive this as well so as you us. you too. Which I, I think is really cool. And, you know, you need to have... Paul does learn out his, his jump... Oh, no, you've taken your jumper off. Yes. Damn. Oh, I, I don't do wear the same to, jumper all the time. You do need to come out in some beige attire. Hmm. Like a big collar and probably one of those... No, 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 kip, no. Like a kipper tie. No, it's got to be a rally jacket in a Chevette. No, it's got to be a kipper tie and you're going to... You're gonna feel so at home in this. If you want to just be transported back, this is the car. Yeah. So you're oh. driving it like a rally car. Love it. Love the little shorts to be gear stick. Yeah. Oh. Big transmission tunnel. Brilliant. I love dashboards of this era. Mid to late 70s cars had the best dashboards. <laughs> they did. Just big chunky switches, yeah. the radios right there. Everything's where you need it. It just does what it's meant to do. But it, they're also very good looking dashboards, don't yeah. you think? I do. They started to stick some design in, and it was very American style raked. Yeah, but a lot of people now would just styles. look at that and go, that's so basic. Mm. But it isn't, is it? Really? And the works cars had the big how the trip masters here and all of the switches down at the bottom here. That's the thing. That's the, I thought. Yeah, yeah you I can't thought. actually move the seats backwards and forwards in this, so you either fit in as you bet or you don't. Crikey. Mad, isn't it? Can you imagine these days anyone accepting that you can't adjust the seat to suit your preferences? This is so lovely to drive this. So, wow. we're on our third rally legend. We've done the Avenger, yeah. which became the Sunbeam. We've done the TR7. And this is the Chevette. Which one so far grabs you most as a rally car? <laughs> this one. Definitely. The TR definitely is a sports car. This is a rally car. Double D clutching as well. Double D clutching. So Mike Broad, who we were talking about earlier, who was in with Robin Air Mansell in the Avengers, and he was in with Tony Pond. Um, in a number of cars and in the Chevette he was in with Russell Brooks in the Andrews Heap for Hire car yeah. and he told me that when Jimmy first got the Manta 400 and they pulled up in the service area Mike said it was the first time as a, a professional co-driver that he'd actually felt jealous of someone else's car and he jumped in Ian Grindrod's seat in the Manta and he said he couldn't believe how much space there was. And he said it felt like armchair rallying compared to the Chevette. So what you said about it feeling very yeah, small in it here. it does. Imagine in rally trim when you're, you've got the roll cage and everything else around you, you've got all your kit. It feels like you're really cracked up. But as a result, the Manta, or on the flip side, the Manta was very hot and sweaty apparently. It was yeah. a, actually okay. a horrible car to be in because <laughs> of the heat. But, but the Chevette was very cramped as a rally car. Yeah, I can well imagine. It does feel small, it feels small, and it does feel like you could just chuck it around. 
one thing you said to me when we said we were doing rally cars was that the one thing that sticks out to you about this area of rallying is that nothing could beat the escorts and that almost um, irks you a bit doesn't it as a it BMC does. fan 100% so the fact it that this really car does. was the one that came out of the box and uh, and beat the escorts just on home soil color. this was very much a British rally championship car it wasn't as successful on the international stage um, but it, it achieved some massive results yeah. in the British Open Rally Championship and that was the championship that all the works drivers used to come and do all the international guys used mm. to do it so yeah rally car number three and I feel like we're we're gaining a bit of momentum because the more we go through this series, the more we feel like we're in a rally car. Yeah. I definitely feel like, yeah, let's get the helmets out. <laughs> needs a rev counter though, doesn't it? Of course it needs a rev counter. Like, it just needs to get rid of that. Why? You might as well just put like a smiley face on that. <laughs> smiley face. <laughs> just a, a smiley, smiley face. A smiley face on there would have gone much better it would wouldn't it i mean i've already got that there yeah. why do i need it there as well i don't know it's, like, it's mad who came up with that i mean how did the conversation go in the boardroom right it's okay so we, we need to just blank out that space where we're not going to put a dial what do you yeah. reckon guys so we just like everyone put an idea in a hat and we'll just pull one out yeah a man called trevor pulled that idea out didn't he I'm really sorry to all the Trevors that are watching this. <laughs> um, he didn't mean it. It's a Trevor thing to do. You can't say that. Can I? No. Are you sure? Well, that's why right. there's a lot of Trevors out there. Are there? You're going to get hate mail from Trevors. <laughs> Commenting below will be a lot of Trevors. Sorry, Trevor. Sorry, Trevor. It's definitely Trevor. Come on, Trevor. Next car. <laughs>